Hey everybody, Eugene here with Darkroom Software. In this quick video, we're going to learn how we can create traded cards in Darkroom Booth. Now, this isn't using any new features, it's using what was already existing in Darkroom Booth the surveys, graphic lists, templates, and how uh, we link those all together is what we're going to cover in this uh, video. So, here's an example of what we're going to create. Um, here's an example of what we used at uh, Photo Booth Expo. So let's go ahead and jump right in my computer and see how this is all done. Okay, so here's the um, screen template that we used and the, the trader card that we output at the Photo Booth Expo. But before we get there, let's go ahead and start off with something just a little bit simpler. We have the uh, memory, uh, memory Mate demo, and this is using a four by six output um, because this is something most people have and they can test it out before uh, going on and getting five by seven media or something like that. We'll talk about that in just a moment, but let's look at the output template. Uh, we're gonna click edit. And what's really important here is uh, the naming that you use here. We wanna make sure uh, we're consistent and that we use the same naming in the survey. Um, so I always use capital, for, uh, capitalize the first letter in each word and use a space. And I'm pretty consistent with, uh, with that. However you do this, you can do, uh, it's up to you, but uh, you just wanna be consistent. And I'll show you what this, how it all works and how it, uh, why it's important in just a moment. But you can see um, we have this, the, there's a percent sign, first name, and then percent sign. Same thing for last name, team name. Here it looks like they're all capitalized, but that's just the font. Um, and then same thing right down here. This is the player number, and um, it's uh, running off the edge, but this is gonna be replaced with a typically a one or two digit number, so it's okay that it goes off the edge uh, here because it'll just be a single number. <clears throat> so let's switch over to the text menu and look at the survey and this will start to make a little bit more sense so we have a our, um, our trader demo we'll go ahead and edit it and one thing that's really important um, all the templates that we're going to be using in this demonstration you can download and use uh, they'll be at the help center article so darkroomsupport.com and then do a keyword search search for trader cards so we have our first question, uh, enter your first name and this option right here, um, use response to set template text field named and then it's first name. So you wanna have that checked and make sure that this matches up identically with the entry in uh, the template. So we have first name, last name, player number, and then team name. And there's one other option in this um, survey that we're not, uh, using in this specific template, but it'll make more sense once we move over to the trader card, the double side trade card, trader card. Uh, that's the overlay and the team color. So we'll get to that in just a moment, but let's go ahead and uh, close this, <clears throat> choose it, and then start it up and uh, test it out. So the uh, this option is set up for a um, four by six printer, but I have five by seven media in my printer. So it's just gonna output to a file. Um, and like I said before, uh, this, we're not using this option currently, but uh, it will come in uh, into play in just a second. So I'm gonna choose green, but it'll still show as red. <clears throat> So gonna, you can see that it's already filled out all that information. Uh, it's gonna take a picture. And I'm gonna go ahead and skip that for now. But uh, you can see uh, this is what would print out of a, your four by six printer. So you can test it out if you don't have the five by seven media set up for the double-sided trader cards. 
So let's look at that output template. Um, go choose. Oh. And <clears throat> so this is set up on a three and a half by five. And each side is going to be a two and a half by three and a half. So two and a half by three and a half, two and a half by three and a half. But together they're actually going to print out on three and a half by five and then we fold it. Uh, and this is why I have five by seven media in my printer. So everything's pretty much the same. The only difference here is that we have uh, two photo nodes. Um, if you wanted it to take two pictures, you would just, uh, it would say photo two instead of photo one. So you just change that and then uh, you'd set it to capture two images. But um, what's gonna happen here is it's gonna capture one image and use it in both spots. Uh, a player number right here and then I just added text so we know what this number is it's not a random number we know it's the player number um, the year is also added in this one it's using percent year percent so it'll automatically update with the year and then the last thing but pretty significant is the background it's using instead of a single graphic in this case it's using a graphic list and we have the name set to overlay with the different colors um, and you can um, cycle through those different colors I'll show you in just a second but uh, these are all different files to match up with those those colors so if we let's say set it to green but uh, we're not going to manually do that the survey is going to select that so we're going to cancel this and switch back over to our survey so now we have an idea um, oh one more thing I'm not sure if I mentioned this but in the template, it should have percent team name percent. It should have percents on the template. Um, in the graphic list, it does not have the uh, percent because it's not replacing it. It's not, not uh, placeholder text, but th that's a little bit um, of a difference. So the text should have percents around it. The graphic list name should not in the template. Um, We'll spit, we'll switch back over to our um, survey. And it, it, we've already seen this. The main thing I want to uh, show you is here, there's no percent signs on the text. Um, it's just the, the word. Oops. Well, we'll cancel so I don't undo what I just did. <clears throat> Team name and then. In this situation, we have uh, user response to set a graphic from a graphic list named, and we want to make sure that name matches the graphic list. That's how it links the two together. So, we'll close. I don't want to save changes because I accidentally deleted some, and then um, we'll choose. Okay, so let's start up and start a session and then we'll select red <clears throat> and it's going to capture And then, um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, share it to myself. Okay, so in this situation, we're using five by seven media, but printing three and a half by fives. Um, I'll show you that in just a moment. But we have our three and a half by five and we're gonna put it inside an insert, but we could just fold it like this, have a little scoring board to make sure I get a, a straight line. So. It's now scored right down the middle. And then I'm gonna grab one of my inserts I got a nice clean fold. And then 
This slips right in there. There we go. And there's my trader card all finished. Um, like I said, we did uh, keychains. Uh, these were from Neil Enterprises. Um, if you're going to use 4x6 media, you can also, it's a good idea to get, there's a punch that you can get from Neil Enterprises. So you get uh, a nice clean 25 by 3 and a half. Um, and um, so, but the main thing is you can use 4x6 media. It just means you have to do some cutting rather than a single fold. If I go to my printers, uh, I have 5x7 media. And right here under 5x7, I have 3.5 by 5 um, checked. So it will accept that 3.5 by 5 media. I believe it does use a full uh, section of 5x7 media rather than just the 3.5 by 5. So that's something to keep in mind. But it's a lot easier than printing out 4x6 and then doing cuts and then folding and those type of things. Okay, so one other thing I wanted to kind of bring up is the sharing options that you have outside of just printing. So for post to event gallery, and this would also work for photo to phone or email. Um, well, let's look at the templates first and kind of get an idea of what we have. This is gonna be used for your print, and then this is your back, and this is your front. Same thing for this, this template right here. I'll show you that one in just a moment. But uh, I have my print template, but then I made two separate templates from that. Uh, for the front and the back. Under my post to event gallery settings, I've enabled animations. And if I look at that, I have my front GIF template and my back GIF template, and I have a delay of two seconds. So what's gonna happen is it's going to show the front side and then flip to the back side for two seconds and then do that. And it's a nice way to share something that's double-sided uh, online. So now that we've got the basics of um, trader cards, okay, so this is what we did at um, PBX this year. We had um, this template, um, and I'll include it, but it's good to learn from, but it's not really useful in production because it's set up with specific uh, logos and team names that might not be work for your specific setup um, but we can change it to Panthers so that's the, the graphic list there but it's also using a uh, green screen background so I have a, a graphic list with these graphics behind it um, so the difference here you can do that with a survey, but um, what I've done is inside the screen template, uh, you can cho choose the background from the screen template rather than the survey. So uh, just to show a diff few different options on how to interact with graphic lists, but these will all be included so you can test them out and use them for yourself. Um, one other small thing I want to bring up for um, Core Edition users, or if you're a booth user and you think about using Core Edition, is if you go to your setup tab under your templates and select sample template with templates in sports, these templates have been in here since early 2000s, uh, so well over 20 years, but they. Um, do the exact same thing and core editions more maybe more made a little bit more for this type of workflow if we um, select a temp uh, image and then go to my sports borders I'll do the double-sided one we just type in And then uh, we don't have to fill out all that information, but you can see how that all works. 
you have um, exact same thing. So you need to enter that information, select the next kid, click T, and then um, it updates. And this is a little bit easier workflow. And you can even use QR codes that have the information already in it, so you don't even have to type anything, take out user error. Uh, with Core Edition, you scan a QR code, capture the image, and then it associates that data with that image, and it automatically fills this out. And I'll uh, try to have a uh, video on that coming out pretty soon, uh, but I just want to point that out. If you're doing treasure cards and using Booth, uh, you might want to look at Core Edition to help speed up your workflow um, for team and individual, individual sports. But if it's just for a party, I think booth works just fine. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.